Herzliya Conference 2012. Herzliya Conference 2012. Special interviews, highlights, and live broadcasts on IDC Radio. Hello, Professor Ruth Arnon. You are a prominent scientist and the president of the Israeli Academy of Sciences and Humanities. You're also one of the three members of a team which developed the first Israeli drug, Copaxon. First well, ethical drug. First ethical drug. Yes. Welcome to the Herzliya Conference. Thank you. Please tell us, tell us a little bit about the discovery of this drug, of the Copaxon drug. Well, this discovery actually uh, is the, the outcome of basic research that we were doing at the Weizmann Institute. Uh, we were studying the mechanism of the disease, a disease in uh, laboratory animals, which is the animal model for multiple sclerosis. And we uh, produced a material that we hoped will induce the disease, and we hope that it will be a wonderful research tool to study the mechanism of the disease. But the result was that it did not induce the disease at all, but rather inhibited the induction of the disease by the original protein that, that is involved in this disease. And this gave us the hope uh, that, it will, that it might be helpful in patients too. Now with this drug, you managed to change many lives. How has this changed your life since? Uh, it changed my life mainly in uh, the recognition that I have from, the, from my colleagues in, in Israel and also from abroad who know about it. And uh, I think mainly because of contacts that I have with MS patients and uh, some of them come and tell me about it patients that are being treated by Copaxone and are doing so well, and this is the highest satisfaction that one can get. Now, Israel is known to have the most university degrees per capita, and we take pride in our Nobel Prizes, in our high tech. How are we doing in the medical field? How do we compare to the rest of the world? I think that on the whole we compare uh, not badly, although in clinical research uh, we are doing less good than uh, countries in the West, for example, the United States. And I think that this, the main reason for that is that a clinician, in, clinicians in Israel, mainly uh, physicians in hospitals, they are so busy with their daily, uh, daily work that they don't have time to do research. They don't have any protected time for research that is uh, provided to them by, by the hospital. So any research that they do, they do at the expense of their own free time, and they don't have time to do anything else. So this is why the Israel Academy uh, initiated a fellowship two that were called um, a clinician researchers. Uh, it was a fellowship that was given to the hospital so that the hospital would free the particular physician for half his time to do research. Uh, when it was under the Israel Academy of Sciences, the Batsheva, the Batsheva Fund, uh, it was uh, intended mainly for very young clinicians in the first five years after their uh, specialty. Uh, but uh, now the Israel Science Foundation uh, continues with this uh, type of fellowships, and this, it is provided also for more senior clinicians, and I think that this will change the clinical research in Israel. And promote more research. Promote more research. And I think that a, a physician who is doing research is also a better physician. He becomes a better physician. Mm -hmm. Now, what other great medical <coughs> developments do you foresee coming out of Israel? There are many... Uh, I mean, compared to the size of Israel, there are many biotech companies who are uh, they're, they're eff well, make, doing efforts in uh, uh, developing drugs. Many companies that develop medical equipment. So from this point of view, I think that Israel is uh, doing quite well in, on the global scene. What are you specifically working on now? Uh, 
I am working, and this is also in collaboration with a startup company that was established on the development of a universal uh, flu vaccine uh, that hopefully uh, will be effective against many strains of uh, influenza. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to finish with a personal note. How do you have time to be such a well-known scientist and still be a family woman? This, this is a question that, um, that addresses women in general, uh, career-oriented women. Now it is easy because my children are grown up, even my grandchildren are almost grown up. But uh, when the children were small, it was just uh, more hours to be put uh, into the entire uh, a schedule and this was it. Do you believe that men and women can achieve the same type of uh, scientific success? Yes, I think so. I think that it's only a question of determination. I mean, of course, it's individually. I mean, it, there are individual differences between people, men or women, but uh, once uh, the capacity is there, it's only a question of determination. Okay, Professor Ruth Arnon, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate your input. Thank you.